Hi everyone, my name's Daryl. So in this video, I interviewed Jack McGee, owner of Jack's Transmissions, where he talks about some of the differences between early GTRs and later GTRs and the longevity of the transmissions. Most people know this, but early GTRs from 2009 to 2011 are known as CBAs and later GTRs 2012 to current are known as DBAs. And there's always been sort of a debate about CBA's transmissions and DBA's transmissions that the CBA's were prone to failure. Well, Jack has basically been servicing and rebuilding GTR transmissions since about 2015. He's rebuilt over thousands of transmissions. And so, yeah, I would trust Jack in regards to what are the differences between the two transmissions. So in this first segment, Jack talks about clutch seals and some of the failures that he's seen on early CBA GTRs. Is there any significant differences um, between the years of the GTRs in regards to the transmissions um, that, that you know, would make you know, one year better than another year you know, as far as transmission longevity goes? Yeah, I, I think the DBA and up, is probably your best bet. The okay. CBAs, you know, the CBAs were a good trans, but they had a couple of uh, little things that made them kind of finicky. The, the clutch seals, I don't know if they were during the manufacturing process, maybe they uh, changed something on the DBAs to make them a little bit better, but the clutch hmm. seals, even though they look identical, uh, they blow out in the CBAs pretty easily. So that was a real interesting segment, listening to Jack talk about clutch seals. Um, on early versus later GTRs. And it's so interesting because, you know, from his perspective, they look the same, but somehow, some way, the DBA's clutch seals are superior. Luckily, those are relatively easy to replace and it doesn't have any long lasting impact on the GTR transmission. But in this next segment, Jack talks about synchro sleeves and why the DBA synchro sleeve is much superior in design than the CBA. And then you also have uh, what's called a synchro sleeve. Um, that's a sleeve that transfers power from the shaft to the gear um, to to you know to to move power from the engine through the through the shaft into the gear and out the rear wheels. So those synchro sleeves have these. It's really weird. I've never seen any other application with these kinds of sleeves. It's only the GTR that seems to have them, but they have like a little stop on them. So when they slip over the gear it hits this stop that's on the inside where it, it, it won't engage the sleeve too far. But what happens is the stop will break off and then the sleeve, you know, then the sleeve goes too far, but that's not what kills the car is that stop when that, it's just a piece of, you know, heat treated metal that'll pop out and then it'll jam uh, in the assembly. <laughs> and people think that from shifting in and out of gear, hitting the stop, shifting, is what breaks those. But I found that I've had cars come in with 80,000 miles on them with CBA synchro sleeves in them, no problem. You build the engine in it, you know, with, you know, like put a stroker in it or something with higher, you know, with a, a, a much higher stroke. And then all of a sudden, a month later, the car comes back because it's stuck in gear and all the stops are broken. Hmm. So I think harmonics plays a big part in the CBA sleeve issue, hmm. but factory cars, you know, untouched have had those stops break as well. It just depends on, you know, the how how the car has been driven and and and, and all of that stuff. But if those synchro sleeve stops break, unfortunately, that's kind of a disaster uh, because when they break, it doesn't <coughs> damage anything uh, anything else in the trans when they break. But you have to tear the trans completely down to replace those. <laughs> um, and the newer sleeves, I can probably send you pictures of the differences. The newer sleeves don't have such a tiny stop on them. They basically, the stop is integrated the whole way down the sleeve. You know, it's much more robust. You know, that's that's another issue with that, where if it doesn't have upgraded synchro sleeves in a CBA trans and that happens, that's a big one. That's okay. that's one that's gonna cost you a lot of money because you gotta you gotta basically redo the whole trans while you're doing those. And that's that that's that's what makes the CBA trans less attractive, in my opinion, over okay. all the other is the, okay. is the stops because everything else like TSB clips, easy, you can, yeah, you know, and uh, the the clutch seals easy, you know, all that stuff is not that hard. It's those stops. If you mm -hmm. find 
they're, they're little they're, they're little metal squares, super tiny squares you'll see in a trash magnet. If you see any of those in a CBA trans, you're hosed. Hmm. Um, you know that that's gonna that's gonna require a complete disassembly and an overhaul of the unit. Oh, that's that's super super helpful. Um, yeah, that's great. So that synchro sleeve issue certainly would give me more pause than the clutch seals because the potential for additional damage, the GTR transmission. In this next segment though, Jack talks about the ETS front drive gear spline issue and what kinds of catastrophic failures that he's seen on CBA GTRs. You're really not gonna wanna miss this segment. Um, and there's no other significant changes well, in the ETS front drive system, there, okay. there is an output gear that okay. uh, there's, there's a pair of gears that transfers power to the ETS unit, and then it goes to the shaft and out to the front wheels. There's a smaller drive gear for the front drive system that has a retaining clip um, on it. And uh, people keep thinking that the, the retaining clip fails, the retaining clip fails. It's not. It's the, uh, the splines on the shaft are really short um, and they're brittle. So if you shock, again, it's the shock. If you shock the car enough, that gear is pressing on that clip and it's, it's hitting those splines over and over again and they're brittle. And then the end of the splines that the clip is, is hanging on to begin to pop off. They break off one by hmm. one. Hmm. And eventually enough of the spline will go away where there's nothing holding the clip anymore. And then the gear exits out past the shaft. And that is, I would say probably the the most damaging failure you can have in a gtr you can break gears and stuff that that's not that big of a deal uh but if that comes out what happens is the driver doesn't know that that happened you don't feel anything when that breaks um but what happens is, is it's right next to the clutch uh, oil pump drive gears where that gear sits so when the gear breaks the clip and or not the clip but the splines and comes out it basically rubs itself and grinds itself up against the, the oil pump drive gear on the clutch. And it just grinds away and it creates this metal powder that gets into absolutely everything oh, no. in France. It gets oh, into no. all the top bodies, the solenoids. The solenoids are basically large magnets. So it all collects in the solenoids. It's in the oil pump, in, in all the channels and the, the, the gear shafts, everything. So that failure, it really sucks when that happens because you have to, you know, you have to go into everything with so much detail, like the shifting solenoids and the valve body. I got to take them all apart, you know, check the bushings for odd wear where if they've been used too long with that stuff in there, we just have to replace them or we, if we can rebuild them or whatever. Um, there, there's a lot. If that happens, you pull the front cover off the trans and you see that clip is broken. That is not easy. That that trans has every single piece of that trans needs to be torn apart, uh, flushed out, cleaned out, checked um, to make sure it's not damaged from the metal that was in it and, and everything. It's so that that is that is also another. So yeah, I, I said before, the see the sleeve is one of the most detrimental things that can happen to a CBA trans, and was why people don't like it. That clip is also oh, so I, that I was. Say, so that That's also a... one of the things where it, the trans is essentially totaled at that point. That, it, it can be rebuilt, but you be, you have to do a lot to save that trans. And, that, and that's primarily the CBA, not the, not the DBA that has that issue? It, well, the DBA does have that issue sometimes. It's okay. extremely rare. It takes okay. a lot of shock loading for a long time to have because in, this, in the DBAs, they made that spline um, quite a bit larger. Okay. So it's the same. Same clip design and everything, but the spline is a lot bigger, so it's okay. not as prone to break. Yeah, it, so it does happen, but it, it, it's it's very rare. So it's, it's it's interesting. A lot of people say the CBA transmissions suck and the DBA transmissions, you know, are a lot better. But then you also have yeah. people saying that no, they're pretty much the same, other than the TSB clip. But yeah, it's not just the TSB clip issue. There's lots of other issues that can okay. cause problems with the CBA versus the DBA transmissions. Yeah, and you can like you know get, get ahead of it a little bit. Where if you yeah. do have a CBA trans that's still working properly, it hasn't had any failures yet. You know, one thing you can do is if you pull the front cover off to do to upgrade pressure sensors or whatever. Um, everybody out there has their own design clip to go on that, whether it's a retainer 
or a different type, you know, style of clip or whatever that goes on that uh, to prevent that problem from happening. Yeah. So you yeah. you can take precautions uh, to prevent that from happening to, to, to allow that CVA trans to survive. Uh, but if you leave it alone and you don't, you know, try any of the aftermarket stuff on that clip to allow it to survive, if that happens, that trans is 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 done. It's unless you want a full build of some kind, you might as well just find another core somewhere. So that, yeah, that the, the front drive gear and those sleeves are 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 things that are different on the CBA over the DBA, and will make the CBA a, a real pain to deal with if that happens, like financially, like it's just going to be expensive. Okay. So that's it. I certainly appreciate Jack sharing his knowledge with us and would certainly give me food for thought in regards to purchasing a CBA GTR. In my next video, I'll have Jack on and he'll talk about his advice to tuners in regards to the GR6 transmission. As always, if you got value from this video, please like it. The more likes a video gets, the more likely it is that YouTube's going to send that content out to other folks. Also consider subscribing. I've got a lot of other GTR content planned and some more content with Jack in it as well. And I hope to see you again in the next one very soon. I've seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain. Some things are not the same as they were a year ago. But all will be okay, I move on each and every day. The past is where it stays, way back a year ago.